For the second half of section 1.4, we're going to be looking at the integrals of odd and even functions and seeing how, seeing what the oddness or the evenness of the function can tell us about the integral. So we have an example here. A pendulum has been oscillating since the beginning of time, and it has velocity function v of t equals sine of t meters per second, where t represents the number of seconds since before I started reading this question. What is the net displacement of the pendulum from pi over 2 seconds before I started reading this question to pi over 2 seconds after I started reading the question? So we want to interpret this question first so we know what sort of answer we're supposed to give. And it's asking us, what is net displacement? And we have a formula for net displacement. We know that it's the integral of the velocity function. And we're told that, uh, so let, maybe let's write down integral of the velocity function here. So we've got integral of sine of t dt. We need some limits of integration here. We know that uh, we're asked to find net displacement between pi over two seconds before I started reading the question. Since t represents the number of, sec the number of seconds after I started reading the question, pi over two seconds before I start reading uh, corresponds to the t value of minus pi over 2. Our upper limit of integration is pi over 2 seconds after I started reading, and that corresponds to a t value of positive pi over 2. So here's the quantity that I'm looking for. I can use my fundamental theorem of calculus to actually do this computation. So I know that an antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. I need to evaluate this from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Uh, let's see, evaluating at positive pi over 2 gives me minus cos pi over 2. Then I subtract away the same thing, so minus cos of minus pi over 2. Now, it turns out that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and cosine of minus pi over 2 is also 0, so all of this works out just to be 0 meters. So why did this happen? Why, why did we get 0 out? Well, one, one answer would be that the pendulum uh, is in the same location, pi over 2 seconds before I started reading, and pi over 2 seconds after I started reading. But maybe a little bit deeper, we want to draw a picture of our velocity function here. So I know that the function sine of t looks something like this. And pi over 2 it occurs kind of at the two peaks here. So that's positive pi over 2. Here's minus pi over 2. So what I'm doing when I'm computing this net displacement is I'm looking at these areas, this area between the curve and the axis and the x values minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. So I get some negative area here below the axis. And I get some positive area here above the axis. And it turns out that the symmetry of, of, this, of the function sine means that this red area equals this green area. And so that uh, the, why, why exactly are they equal? Well, it's that symmetry. It's the fact that uh, if I were to rotate this sine function by 180 degrees, I would get the same thing out. I would get the same graph, which is to say uh, that sine is an odd function. Algebraically, what it means for sine to be odd is that sine of minus t equals minus sine of t. And it turns out that functions with this type of symmetry are going to exhibit this property, uh, where the integral is 0, provided that you're integrating about from a, val from a negative number to the absolute value of that number. So here I'm going from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. It certainly wouldn't be the case that the red area is the same as the green area if I had been integrating from like minus 10 to pi over 2, simply because uh, I wouldn't have had the same symmetry to work with between minus pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. 
Let's think about the same question now, but with a slightly different velocity function. This time I have the exact same question, except the velocity is this cosine of t function here. So if I want to compute the same integral, I have the integral from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2 of cosine of t dt. Uh, this time, an antiderivative of cosine is sine. I'm still evaluating from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. And I know that sine of pi over 2 uh, minus sine of minus pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Uh, sine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1. So I get out 2 here, 2 meters. So this time the pendulum uh, is swinging and it, it travels, uh, it has a total net displacement of 2 meters between these two times. And again, if we draw a picture here of the graph of cosine, this time here is pi over 2 right at uh, the 0 of cosine, here's minus pi over 2. This time, the kind of symmetry that cosine has ends up taking this, uh, if we were to split this up into the integral from minus pi over 2 to 0, and the integral from 0 to pi over 2, this time the areas uh, are equal. I guess maybe last time I should have said that um, the green area is equal to minus the red area. This time it's more accurate to say that the green area is equal to the red area, and they're both positive, so these areas add. Um, so the uh, green area here is has an area of 1, the red area also has area 1, and so they add to get this 2 meters. This is because uh, cosine is an even function, meaning it has reflectional symmetry about the uh, vertical axis here. So if I were to reflect this function over the vertical axis, I would get the exact same function back out, and the way we represent that algebraically is we say that cosine of minus t equals uh, cosine of t, which is to say that cosine of t is an even function. So we have these two types of functions, even functions and odd functions. There are certainly functions which are neither, uh, and there is only one function which is both, which is uh, the constant function zero. So let's uh, get a theorem here to talk more generally about odd and even functions. So if f of x is an odd function, then the integral from minus a to a of f of x dx equals zero. If f of x is an even function, then the integral from minus a to a of f of x dx is going to be twice the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. So we're taking advantage of the symmetries here of odd and even functions. We know that uh, odd functions have that rotational symmetry. If you rotate their graphs by 180 degrees, then you end up with the same picture, meaning that any area uh, to the left of the axis will cancel to the left of the vertical axis will cancel any area to the right of the vertical axis. Even functions, on the other hand, have reflectional symmetry, meaning that area to the left of the axis adds to area to the right of the axis, and since they're the same, you get out um, twice the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. So to try to use this theorem, we have an example. We are given that this function uh, e to the minus x squared from 0 to 2 is 0.88, and we want to compute the integral from minus 2 to 2 of this function e to the minus x squared dx. So in order to do this, I want to think about the question, is e to the x squared an even or an odd function? So let's, let, let's uh, call e to the minus x squared f of x. And in order to check whether or not this is an even or odd function, I need to think about f of minus x. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm kind of checking to see, is this the negative of the original function or is it the same as the original function? 
So here, uh, f of minus x means replace all of my x's by minus x's. So I have e to the minus, well, here's an x, so I'm going to replace it by minus x squared. I know that squaring minus x gives me regular x squared. So this is e to the minus x squared. And this is the same as f of x. Since f of x equals my f of minus x, then what we can conclude is that f of x is even. Even functions, we know uh, their integrals add, or their integrals about a symmetric interval add. So if I'm integrating from minus 2 to plus 2 here, then the integral there of e to the minus x squared dx is equal to twice the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the minus x squared dx. And so this is, we're told that this quantity, uh, this integral from 0 to 2 is 0.88. So this is 2 times 0.88, which is 1.76. So if we know something about the area to the right of the vertical axis, we can learn something about the area again on this kind of symmetric interval from minus 2 to 2.